air picture going on here really quick as we are getting ready for the finals. So we are going to see Alex Collins um, with his team of Charizard, Incineroar, Gastrodon East, Snorlax, Cresselia, and Venusaur. And we're going to see Nate once again with that Tapu Bulu, Mawile, Politoed, Gothitelle, Incineroar, and Ludicolo. Once again, Charizard, another another Charizard uh, we see on these matches. All right, as we're going to hop into this game. So, Nate, we've seen quite a bit on stream today. And actually, this is Alex's first time on stream. Um, so, I definitely think uh, Alex has an interesting team. We see that he has the ability to just suck up storm, uh, suck up water with that storm drain, which could be a pretty big deal. Um, that would stop that Ludicolo from going for its scalds and Politoed from going for its scalds as well. But that Ludicolo can just pretty easily go for a Giga Drain or Energy Ball into that Gastrodon, picking up the KO and getting rid of it without a second thought. Um, so moving forward into the game. I definitely think Snorlax could be an important player in this game. Unfortunately, that Mawile will be doing a lot to it, and that Bulu isn't something you quite want to do. But Snorlax is always going to be an interesting thing to handle. Um, but Nate's team does honestly have a bit of a good matchup against it. Being able to uh, potentially encore it, Parish Song it at the end of the game if needed, definitely could help everything out. So let's go ahead and hop into this game. Once again, we're seeing our teams of Alex Collins, aka Nerd of Now, with the Charizard, Incineroar, Gastrodon, Snorlax, Cresselia, and Venusaur. And Nate with the Tapu Bulu, Mawile, Politoed, Gothitelle, Incineroar, and Ludicolo. So interesting. Um, so right now we see that Nate's once again ready to rock. Uh, locking in pretty quickly, ensuring that uh, he, he knows what his strategy is. He knows how he wants to lead against these matchups, I'm sure. As we do see, we're hopping into this game pretty quickly. I definitely think Gastron's one of those choices where it's very, very nice if you're able to play it well. Alright, so moving forward out of this game. We are going to see that Cresselia and the Incineroar come out. And we see the Gothitelle and Incineroar come out from Alex. We do see that Nate's Incineroar is in fact faster. Uh, I believe that is Nate's. Uh, I believe, yeah, so we see that Nate's Incineroar, or Alex's Incineroar, pardon me, is faster. And then we see that Nate's uh, is going to be the slower of the two. All right, uh, so I do think we could see just a trading of fake outs here. Neither player really wanting to give either the ability to just go for any attack, but we do see the fake out, or pardon me, the switch out rather, into Politoed. Setting up that rain once again, doing the thing that the Toads love to do. As we see the Protect come out from Gothitelle, uh, trying to avoid what I'm assuming he thought might be a knockoff. As we see the Ice Beam from Cresselia just trying to get a little bit of chip damage onto that Gothitelle so it can follow up the next turn with a uh, knockoff from that Incineroar most likely. Alright, so right now if, I'm, if I am Alex, I'm not in the greatest of all the positions. Um, I am have a type advantage on one, but I do uh, get KO to a skull from another, uh, potentially from another. See the U-turn come out from that Incineroar into the Gothitelle slot. And uh, we do see that Politoed did, hasn't gone for its uh, attack yet, I don't, don't believe. But that Cresselia did actually move first, which is kind of interesting. Uh, seeing the Cresselia be the fastest thing on the field. But we do see that Snorlax come on out. As the Parish Song is has been sung, three turn countdown starts now for these Mons that are on the field as we see the Trick Room come off. Uh, so that Trick Room is actually going to be kind of helpful uh, for Alex because now his Snorlax can get off its Belly Drum, being able to boost up as strong as it wants. Uh, though he does have to worry about the potential from an Encore of that Politoed. 
Gothitelle is honestly not in a great position here, but I do think it is very important for him to keep it around just so it can stop things from switching out so it can uh, so it can force things to perish from the Parish Song. Alright, so as we look at that, so that Politoed though can potentially Encore, potentially Scald Burn, but we do see him switch on out. Going into the Incineroar. Incineroar not wanting to play in this rain too much, but he just has to deal with it for now. Uh, dropping both the attacks with Snorlax. Raising the attack right back up with its Belly Drum. Going to go ahead and proc its own Berry, getting it back to full HP. As we see the Psychic come out into the Snorlax, doing just a little bit of damage. As we see the Crest actually... Uh, Change the trick room back. Probably a bit of a misprediction from Alex there. Probably thinking that that Gothitelle was also going to attempt to switch to the trick room because he predicted him. Truly, Lex level mind games. But now that Snorlax is honestly still in a pretty okay position, um, the f uh, fake out potential from the uh, Incineroar is kind of scary, but low kick is really what I would be afraid of. And I believe at this percentage of HP, that low kick will be able to pick it up. Alright, as we do see that Trick Room get reversed uh, by both of these players, uh, dim the Dimensions have returned back to normal as the Parish Count falls to 1 for these 3 Mons. And at this point, I think we are just going to see that the Gothitelle switches out, and we might see a low kick actually go into that Snorlax, or try to preserve the uh, initiative. Actually, I don't think we've seen Protect from that Incineroar yet, so interesting information that it is in fact not a uh, return, or pardon me, an Assault Fest one. We see the Special Defense drop uh, happen, and it's an Earthquake Snorlax, interestingly. Uh, getting rid of the ability to take a lot of damage uh, with that Levitate ability from Cresselia. Cresselia just floating a little bit above the air as we do see that Gothitelle fall. Rain stops and the Parish Song finishes. Cresselia gonna go ahead and faint from that and Snorlax is also going to share the same fate. Alright, so uh, after that turn, the only one left on the field is Nate's uh, Incineroar. Incineroar are going to be able to do a lot of damage to it here. So going, uh, so looking at what Alex might have in the back. If I'm Alex, I'm honestly a little bit scared at this point. Um, I've lost some of my strongest mods, but we do see that Gastrodon come on out, and that Ludicolo, and then finally the Incineroar. All right, so Incineroar does go ahead and intimidate both of those mons. Intimidate really only going to be affecting that Incineroar. Incineroar can go for a fake out, maybe a U-turn if needed, and uh, a Scald not going to be able to do anything with that Gastrodon chilling around. We do see that Incineroar fake uh, switch on out for the Politoed. Politoed setting the rain right back up maybe try to just get off a grass move into that Gastrodon, ensuring that he has this victory. Fake Out comes out into that Gastrodon. Fake Out comes out into that uh, that already moved um, Ludicolo. That was a good play by Alex. Um, normally you don't want to uh, fake out a Mon that you know is going to fake out, but that ensured that it wasn't going to be taking a grass move or it wasn't going to be going for a grass move into that Gastrodon. As we do see the uh, Giga Drain come on out, knocking it out, as we do see Incineroar versus the world. Alright, as we see the knockoff come on out, just probably trying to gather a little bit of information, seeing that it is in fact a wiki berry, and the Parish Song will seal this game up, I believe. With two mons that now no fake out, not too much he's really going to be able to do at this point. So now I think we're probably just going to see either the water in Z move if he if he chooses to show it here, or just going for a scald and ending the game straight off. Incineroar's uh, 
definitely not going to be able to do anything here, but we do see Alex let the Z move go off as Nate does go for the Watarium Z from his uh, Moody Colo onto the Incineroar. Alright, so uh, unfortunately for Alex, he was not able to really make that game happen for him. As we see Incineroar, go ahead and faint. If I'm Nate, I'm definitely happy with how that game went. Um, he was in a very controlling lead for most of that game. The only incredibly scary part for uh, for him was when that uh, Trick Room did go up and the Snorlax was able to set up those very, very powerful belly drums. And then just could fire off returns as he pleased. Alright, so... Looking at looking at this game, all right. So Nate, um, I, if I'm Nate, I honestly think I might just play very similar. Maybe watch out for that. Be a little bit more mindful of those uh, those belly drums returns from that Snorlax, because if he let that get out of get out of hand, that could have been a very hard game and a very different game for Nate. But um, both of these players, um, very ready to go. Uh, both locking in here pretty quickly, I believe in under 30 seconds. But as we head into the game, uh, we're going to see Alex and Nate once again for the finals of the Fort Wayne Mid-Season Showdown. Alright, so we're going to see the Incineroar and the Gothitelle lead for Nate. As we see Snorlax and Charizard for Alex. Snorlax is going to really be stopping that Gothitelle from really wanting to go for uh, really going to be stopping that Gothitelle for wanting to go for the uh, Trick Room. Um, but honestly, that Charizard's not going to be able to do too crazy much to that um, to the Incineroar. As we do see Gothitelle just go right for the Protect. As we see, Charizard actually is carrying the Focus Blast, interestingly. Doing a good amount of damage. I believe if he was Mecha, that might have picked up the KO. As the knockoff does come out from the uh, from it, as the Snorlax does get out the uh, Belly Drum. Going to weaken itself a good amount, but boosting its attack to maximum. Uh, so if I believe that that Charizard did Mega Evolve there. It might have been able to pick up the KO from that boost that it does get. But that's a little bit outside of my uh, realm of cal random calc knowledge. But um, definitely a good play. Interesting that Alex is running Focus Blast. Focus Blast is not a move we often see on it. All right, but we do see the rain uh, come on out for the po uh, with the Politoed uh, for that Incineroar. And we do see another Focus Blast come out, but it is a miss this time. As we see the Psychic go into that uh, Snorlax, picking up that KO. Alright, this game has gotten very rough for Alex already. Um, losing his Snorlax this fast is very rough, but he still does have the ability to change the weather as needed. Um, Alex has played the weather matchup a little uh, very smart, uh, knowing that he's going to want to Mega Evolve while that Politoed is in, so he just can't switch it in immediately and get rid of the weather. So Charizard, most likely, I think we're going to see him Mega Evolve here. And maybe if he is carrying the Tech Solar Beam, go for that into the um, Politoed and then Giga Drain into it, trying to uh, assure that he does not have any more um, time to play with that rain. But also, uh, if he does set up that, manage to set up that Trick Room, he could be in a very bad spot. So we do see that Mega Evolution come on through. Going to set that sun up with that Charizard Wise Drought ability. And then I think we're probably going to see a Giga Drain or maybe even a Sleep Powder coming out from that uh, Venusaur. As we see the Fire Pledge! Fire Pledge goes into Gothitelle. Not doing quite enough, but I believe with the Fountain of Fire. Oh no, with the Berry, the Fountain of Fire will not be able to burn the, burn the competition away. As we do see that Paris song come out, and I think we're going to see a Trick Room here happen. 
All right, so we see the trick room happen. So now he is going. Uh, so now Nate, Nate's team is going to be taking a good bit of damage each turn from that sea of fire. With three turns left on that perish counter, though, let's see if Alex is going to be able to pick up enough KOs. Because uh, right now Nate is at a 4-3 position. Nate, uh, in the trick room matchup, having Mons is much more important than having full HP. Um, so right now I think that Zard is in a okay position, being able to potentially fire off solar beams, a fire pledge as we just saw. Another fire pledge plus grass pledge will be able to pick up the KO onto that um, Gothitel. But if that Venusaur doesn't have another grass move, he's going to be relying on that uh, on Grass Pledge, which is not a very strong move without the use of the Fire Pledge. It's always interesting seeing Pledge moves come out. Pledge moves have been in the game for a very long time, but I think they're really starting to see their heyday this year. As we see the Helping Hand, interestingly enough, come out from the Goth or come out from the Polytoad onto the Gothitelle. Probably trying to target down that uh, Venusaur, as Venusaur does end up protecting as we see the Heat Wave come out from uh, Charizard, picking up the KO onto that Gothitelle. Maybe that little bit of chip damage that we saw from the Sea of Fire last turn doing enough to just burn away the health. With two turns left and now being able to switch, Alex is back in a pretty good spot. As we do see Nate switch in his Incineroar, uh, probably just trying to deal with this uh, Venusaur. Venusaur being one of those mons where it is able to do a lot of damage, but with that sun up, it is very, very fast and will be definitely the last thing moving on this field. Um, and it also gets, uh, it also goes down to another Flare Blitz or to any Flare Blitz at this point. Um, and then. Leaving the sun up at this point is going to be a kind of a liability for Nate, so I definitely think him trying to get the water back up is probably going to be his play. All right, as we do see the Ludicolo switch on back in, as we see the Charizard switch out, as we see him go back out to Cresselia. Not scared of that potential knockoff, it seems. Uh, knockoff coming out from the Incineroar onto the uh, Incineroar, Ludicolo, uh, not taking that Sludge Bomb as the sl uh, Sludge Bomb does go into that Incineroar slot, able to pick up that KO. As the Parish Sound counts down to one for Venusaur. Venusaur most likely going to be switching on out here. Uh, Venusaur, I think it would be very surprising to see it stay in here. But with only that Charizard left, I don't think Charizard, even in the sun, is going to want to take a helping handed uh, water move. Because that essentially brings it back to neutral. Um, so right now, even though Venusaur is very important to this matchup, I don't know if I would be willing to keep it around at this point. As we do see the Venusaur switch on out, let's see Charizard come back in. Charizard setting that sun right back up. As we see the helping hand, so I'm assuming we're going to see that helping hand and then Watarium Z into that Zard. Doing a little bit of damage with that Psychic into the Politoed as we see the Watarium Z come on out. Uh, so I have to assume this is going into the Zard slot, trying to pick up the KO, ensuring that um, one of his big, big damage dealers is taken care of. But we do see it go into that Charizard slot. Going to do a good amount of damage. Not quite picking up the KO. Living on 6 HP. Politoed is going to be able to eat its berry from that Sea of Fire. Going to heal up to a little bit over half. And then we see Ludicolo also taking a little bit of damage. The fire has gone. But luckily, the Firebringer Charizard is still around. At this point, I definitely think that Ludicolo is going to have to be his target. And I don't believe Nate has revealed if he has Protect yet or if he does not. That could be a very uh, rough call for him to make. Zard is definitely going to be one of those mons where he's not going to be able to live at any hit at 6 HP. As we do see it go for a Protect, probably trying to scout out the Protect from that Ludicolo. 
We do see the Scald come out into it, and a Psychic come out from Crest into that uh, Ludic, or pardon me, that Politoed slot as the Ice Beam comes out. <laughs> trying to get a freeze inside of the sun, generally not going to work too well. <laughs> as we try to see the Heat Wave come out probably from this Charizard. All right, so trying to go for that Heat Wave is probably going to be Alex's play. Um, and then uh, maybe we can see something else happen here. Um, it is not super uncommon for Politoads to run uh, Rain Dance, but I think if he did have that, we would have saw it last round. As we do see that Politoad just go for the Protect. As we see the Heat Wave come on out for uh, Alex. Uh, not able to quite dodge that attack yet. Doing a good amount of damage. Ice Beam comes on out. Doing a little bit of damage to that Charizard. Just enough to pick up the KO. And with just a couple turns of sun left, this game might not be all over yet. Um, so at this point, though, honestly, Sludge Bomb uh, should be able to pick up the KO onto the, one of these mons. Grass Pledge, though, might not be able to pick up the KO onto the uh, Politoed. Ice Beam is also going to be a pretty scary thing for it to take if it doesn't manage to if he doesn't manage to call this correctly. All right, as we do see the protect attempt to double protect here, and Sludge Bomb come on out into the poly or er, into the Ludicolo, and we see the Z move come on out from that Cresselia. Revealing a little bit more information than I think Alex really wanted to for this game, knowing that this game was kind of in the bag. Alright, as we see the Shattered Psyche go into the Politoed slot, maybe getting some information of his own about damage calcs, but you have to imagine at that percentage of HP, it was a done deal. Alright, as we're going to hop into the game three. Alex Collins did a great job last game of maintaining that Sun. Uh, sun was definitely one of the key ways of him winning that game, as well as some interesting uh, mechanics from that uh, Sea of Fire made by those Grass and Fire Pledges. And that clutch lid from that Charizard definitely was helpful. Um, so that is good information for Nate, though, knowing that he can't really rely on that uh, Ludicolo to just go for a powerful Waterium Z and just pick up the KO every time. Um, but looking forward to this last game, we're going to see Alex Collins once again on our left and Nate on our right. Um, with the with this last game in mind, I definitely think that we might see some change in, uh, some changes up that are quite interesting. Alex Collins, I know as a player, is very much he very much enjoys making uh, fun teams and having some interesting calls as well as some interesting lead matchups. So I definitely think we might be able to see some interesting stuff come out from him for this last game. Um, he might have some hidden techs hidden in the back. We did see a lot of what he had to offer in the first two games, but you never know. He might have something crazy up his sleeve that will be able to lock this game three down for him in just a moment. Both players taking a little bit more time than they usually do, about a minute versus the 30 seconds of the last couple of games that we saw from both of them as we get heading into this game. All right, as we're going to see the finals of the final match of the final round in the spring midseason showdown for Fort Wayne with Alex Collins versus Nate. All right, as we're going to see the Incineroar as well as the Gothitelle lead from Nate, and we're going to see a classic lead of Venusaur and Charizard. Gen 1 is going to be trying to show in full force today. All right, Charizard is going to attempt, uh, is most likely going to attempt to just uh, prioritize knocking out that Gothitelle. Gothitelle is going to be such a major problem for Alex's team. Maybe going for a Heat Wave or maybe even a Fire Pledge plus a Grass Pledge or a Sludge Bomb and then a Heat Wave might try to do the trick. Um, another possibility we might see from Venusaur here is a Sleep Powder. Um, sleep Powder is another thing that we often see on there, but we do see the Fake Out into the Charizard, and we see a Sleep Powder 
able to connect onto that Gothitelle. Gothitelle going to be taking a quick nap, burning its first turn of sleep, most likely trying to set up that trick room. Venusaur not taking that fake out that turn is very key because now both its Sash, which we saw in game one, and also it's um, also it's now able to just keep going for those pledges and maybe even a Sleep Powder into that uh, Incineroar slot. And Charizard can just keep firing off Heat Waves or that secret tech of Focus Blast. Focus Blast is definitely interesting. Not something you often see on Charizard. Usually you'd See, typically see Solar Beam or Air Slash, maybe even a Tailwind, but we do see Nate go for that Protect. As we see Sludge Bomb going into the Gothitelle. As we see a Focus Blast going into there. And turn number two of sleep, the first, uh, the first turn where he could wake up his past 33% is now gone. He is now up to 50% to wake up here. And now, if I'm Alex, I might want to just get rid of that Gothitelle. Gothitelle could be a very bad, uh, could be in a very bad spot here, as we do see the uh, sun is going to be hiding behind some rain clouds here in a minute. And we're going to see that Charizard's attack get very much weakened, and a Grass Fledge does come out, as we do see the fire attack coming out. Doing a little bit of damage. More damage than I expected, to be entirely honest, in the rain. Onto that Gothitelle. Gothitelle does have a... Oh, right, and Gothitelle does get that uh, th uh, second turn of sleep. Um, uh, second turn of guarantee, or not guaranteed sleep, pardon me. As we do see that uh, Sea of Fire, though, does knock it into its barrier range, allowing it to live another one. So Charizard is now going to be the... Uh, faster of the two I believe so Charizard might be able to go for some interesting stuff he might be able to uh, go for that fire pledge and then the grass pledge actually doing a little bit more damage than the last time based on how these Pokemon are trained but we just see him going for that focus blast trying to pick up as much damage as possible as we see that grass pledge come on out doing just enough to pick up that KO with the rain gone, he might be in a little bit of a bad spot, but that Trick Room does go up, allowing Nate to uh, really start relying on his slower Mons. Um, with that Zard being stuck in here, though, can't reset the sun. So he is going to be stuck playing in the rain for a little while. As we did see earlier t uh, earlier in this uh, set, uh, Gothadel does... Pardon me, Gothitelle does have that Psychic. So, um, if he does go ahead and Psychics and Flare Blitzes into that, uh, into that Venusaur, it could be bad. But, I think more likely we're probably just going to see a Fake Out and then a Target into it. But we actually see that Venusaur just go for the Protect there. Fake Out into that Charizard. Going to take a lot of damage. Not a lot of damage, a good bit of damage. More than you'd expect from a quick fake out. Alright, as we see a sea of fire, just going ahead and burning those Gothitelle, uh, that Gothitelle a little bit more. Not affecting that Incineroar because he is in fact a fire type. Alright, and at this point, I think both players aren't in a terrible position. Um, if he is able to get all, if Alex is able to get out his Charizard and get it back in and set up that sun, he is in a pretty okay spot. Knock off going into that Charizard. It is not able to quite live it, ensuring that that rain and sun are going to be gone. Sleep outer going ahead and missing, and I believe that must have been the last turn of fire. All right, and with the. Uh, with Alex going out to that Snorlax, Snorlax in a pretty good position, able to get off that Belly Drum before that Barry would be knocked off by the Incineroar. But Incineroar does have the ability to run a couple moves. One of those common moves is Low Kick and also Drain Punch. A little bit less common for that Drain Punch, though. Um, so we could see that Snorlax just get Low Kicked into the next dimension if it does end up going for that Belly Drum, and then the Helping Hand from the p or potential Helping Hand from the Gothitelle. We do see Venusaur just going for a protect there really quick. Uh, Snorlax going ahead and belly drumming on up. Going to cut its HP in half, then heal right back up with that 
Barry healing right back to full HP. As we see Psychic come on out, doing some damage to that Snorlax. Oh, with the crit damage, a little bit more than I'm sure he wanted. Knockoff, going to uh, do a lot of damage. And now, uh, Alex Collins could go for a, uh, could go for the Recycle here. Get back up to a good amount of HP for uh, just wasting one turn. Or I think we might just see him just attempt, just go on the offensive here. All right, as we do see the protect coming off from both uh, from uh, both of Nate's mons, as we see Venusaur actually going for a protect as well. As we see the earthquake come out, ooh, that's going to do a lot of damage to Alex's own uh, Venusaur. Probably going to knock it down to its sash here. I'd have to imagine, as it does knock it down to its sash, and with only a couple rooms of uh, turns of Trick Room left. Oh, actually, that was the last turn of Trick Room. That Snorlax is not in a great spot now, but Venusaur will be a little bit faster. Maybe able to put to sleep one of the bigger threats. Potentially just putting that uh, Incineroar to sleep so he can just go for. And another miss actually comes on out. Flare Blitz going to target into the Snorlax. Going to take a lot of damage. Just enough to take it out with a crit. Not sure if the crit mattered. It was, a little, it was probably pretty close here. We see the Psychic go out into that Venusaur. Venusaur is going to fall to the Psychic. Alright, and I think that game is all but wrapped up for Alex with just one Mon left in the back. He says, go Cresselia, as we see both players shake hands. And even with a full HP Cresselia, Psychic type on Psychic type, not going to be doing too much. And with the um, and with Incineroar, I'm not going to be able to use those Psychics, but Ice Beam is a possibility. Not quite enough damage as we're going to see the knockout, or knock off, knocking off that item that he can't knock off. And he's going to see a Heal Pulse into that, um, into the Incineroar, just in case he did have a tech, I assume. Gothitelle, um, not really going to be doing too much here. May go for Helping Hand if it has it, might just stick around and try to go for a Psychic. Oh, uh, with the Moonlight, though, I don't really think this game is going to change too much. I just think the the couple mons that he has to deal with just might be too much. If he is able to stall out all of those knockoffs, all of those uh, Flare Blisses, though, he might be in an okay spot. But he is going to be losing HP turn for turn, and all it takes is one crit for this game to be all over. But Alex is attempting to play to his win con. Actually, we do see that uh, switch out here going into the Ludicolo, probably attempting just to, going to go ahead and try to fake it out. We do see the Moonlight go off, healing it back up, uh, back to about 80% HP. We see the knockoff come out, knocking it back down to a little bit below 50. And let's uh, let's see if this game ends with the fake out. So fake out goes into Cress, and then knockoff comes on out, ending this game. And congratulations to Nate being this uh, tournament's uh, champion of the spring midseason showdown here in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Uh, great games to both players, and great games to everyone who showed up today to play. And we would love to see you here at our next event. Uh, I have been Joe Picorni, and thank you so much.